This is the Copper Crab Podcast. I am Cheney Crab. I am Naveen Copperwise. If you would like to buy any podcast merch, then hit coppercrab.bigcartel.com. If you would like to buy merch from our band, Entheos, that is www.entheosstore.com. If you're not already tuning in on Tuesday nights live on Twitch at 7.30 Central Standard Time every Tuesday, except I believe this week in which we will be doing one on a Sunday because I am will be here and we've got a couple guys from that band coming on the podcast. So usually Tuesdays this week, Sunday, and also next Tuesday is Chelsea Wolf and you know we are not missing that show in Nashville. Uh, we announced a tour today with As I Lay Dying and Chelsea Grin. It's going across the entire United States. You can check out the dates for that on our all of our social media. And so local pre-sale is Thursday, February 29th at 10 a.m. Eastern. And tickets are on sale this Friday. So go and check that shit out. <sighs> oh, my God. I didn't get through the first 10 minutes without cussing. Of course. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but today on the podcast... You pod- told us not to cuss. <laughs> I know, and then I, I knew I was going to be the one to break it. But today our guest <laughs> is Sanjay Kumar. He is in, let's see if I can name them all, in Fury, Wormhole, Grey Lotus. Are you in other bands? Yeah, there are more. <laughs> what else is Equipoise. Equipoise. Oh, that's, Equipoise. Oh, Equipoise, yes, okay. And then I always got, you know, I always got some stuff on the side. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you have going on on the side? Nothing that you're announcing yet? Oh, I got like a solo brutal death metal thing. It's mm-hmm. called Hanuman. Like, yeah, I don't know. know that. It was my COVID thing. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. Like oh, that yeah. was like what I was doing. Then I make beats. Is that I you do that, that under a different project? The beats. I do that for fun. Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you're just one of those guys who you like. You're writing stuff constantly. That's what where you exist. Yes. Yeah. 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 Have you done that your entire life? First song I wrote, I was in like ninth grade. No, no, tenth grade, 2010, and. uh I don't know. It was just fun doing it. Yeah. You know, there's like, okay. Writing music to me, it all comes down to a feeling. Yeah. yeah. There's this one <laughs> feeling and it's the, damn, I made this. Yep. Dude. Totally. Yep. I love that feeling. And that's like, I don't know. The highest I've ever been, dude, is yeah, when I, I, when agree, I get man. that, damn, I made this feeling. Yeah. I think for me, that's the only part of music that I would <clears throat> do no matter what. Yeah. Like, uh, like if I wasn't in a band or anything like that, you know, I might not practice as much as I do or, you know, prepare for all this other stuff that we do. But the actual writing, the music part is like totally the f- funnest thing. Yeah, it's the I best just like part. Love it. I would just, my ideal life is just doing that every day, all day. That's it. I would almost fast forward through like the, r- the writing and recording process just to get to the damn I made that feeling just to the like listening to a finished product (laughs) you know what i mean yeah i enjoy doing all of that stuff but it's really once you hit that point where you can drive around in your car and just listen to what you've done that's my favorite favorite part of the entire like the final final product exactly (laughs) when i'm like finally it's over but also damn i made this that's cool sometimes you know you know like like every every musician here we, we all make our own like shitty little demos you know yeah, yeah. like but uh like sometimes like i make like just like a slam or something like that and i just like <laughs> like this is like the first demo i ever made and i just like can't believe i made that and i like spin this one demo like over and over and over and i'm like like this can't be real dude <laughs> it's too heavy it's, like, it's too it's too good <laughs> yeah yeah well, so what started you off with all the slam stuff how did uh, you get and did you just start in slam because no. that's what i feel about you you're just born and <laughs> born from slam um so <laughs> <laughs> it was uh 2012 um december 2012 wow on youtube uh, this YouTube channel, uh, the YouTube channel, Guttural Brutality 666, <laughs> uploaded a full stream of the anomalies of artificial origin, abominable putridity. And, oh like, yeah. one day, like, my senior year, I was just, like, studying for an exam or something, and I, like, just, like, put it on, like, you know, like, background music, the cover looks sick, it was on my YouTube homepage. <clears throat> I was like, wow. Yeah, like, yeah. So did you like something. death metal already, or? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I was, like, all in the tech death at that time. <clears throat> okay. Like, my favorite bands were, like, Gorod, 
mm-hmm. Beyond Creation, Arch Bar, that kind of thing. Necrophages, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So, so you heard that and you were like, all right, yeah, are all these but, notes. But here's the thing, okay? Because, like, I, I, I looked that up and I'm like, I don't, I don't listen to music like this, really, but, like, this just works for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what is this? You know? So I'm look, looking up the slam thing and still, like, 2012, I find... Um, epicardiectomy in 2012 and i'm like this is slam this is like not the same <laughs> like yeah, yeah and at the time i was like this sucks yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, and then no, uh, but like you know i kept finding other bands like abominable like um analepsy yeah mm, fucking yeah I love analepsy. I almost wore my analepsy shirt tonight. I'm glad I didn't. Would have been matched. No, we should have matched. matched up, <laughs> dude. Um, but yeah, like like analepsy, and then I found like uh, wormed. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're like, so sick. Yeah, <laughs> and then so, but the basically it was just like a decline in the production standards. You know, I was just slowly going down. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm at the fuck. I'm at the bottom, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just listening to stuff recorded <laughs> with a microphone in the middle yeah. of the room, and that's dude. I there's like a textural thing to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I love an absolutely shitty mix that just, but just like <coughs> touches my ear the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, what do you feel is the best example of that? Um, well, it's hard to say. Um, a lot of defeated sanity's mixes, like the mix on passages, like that one's like perfect. I think that's like best. Drums too. I love the sound of those drums. Besides Matt on Almost Human. Uh oh yeah. Obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we were talking the other night about the Echimosis. Ek- yeah, Echimosis. Yeah, that production I think is fucking Dude, hella sick. That one <laughs> there's that record um where like one guitar is like purposefully louder than the other or something. Yeah. It's like so. Do we know that invalid? it's on purpose though? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> But it's really, uh, it's like really cool, but like so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this vortex <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> I love it, dude. Oh. All right. We're going to yeah, have to jam it. some of those in the post show because yeah. I know, oh, hell yeah, I, I know like right the, you know, Naveen's into slam. So, and it's not totally my cup, but I do like abominable putridity and wormed and yeah. those type of bands. So I'm interesting to hear other stuff in that yeah. direction, but. Yeah, this is something. This is a this is definitely a departure from abominable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't okay. even call that like slam personally. It's just like brutal death yeah, metal. Yeah, of. yeah, it, it really is. Well, what's the difference between slam well, and brutal death? Slam is the type of band that like is like only either they're either playing slams or setting up for one right now. You yeah. Know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. And then brutal death metal is just like yeah, brutal death metal. You you'll you'll get a slam or two. It's not like you don't yeah, know yeah. that it's gonna. It might not happen. You know, yeah, and yeah. it doesn't rely on the slams. You know, mm-hmm. there's like usually other cool things happening. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's tech death that doesn't really have any slams at all. No slam zero. Out of <laughs> so you, slam. You, you couldn't be more wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What what are the slams in in tech death? Wormhole? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, true. see, I'm, I guess you guys call uh, yourselves Tech Slam, right? Yeah, it's so totally I'm just So I'm associating you with strictly the Slam scene, but I, oh. I'm unschooled. So yeah, yeah. you're Tech Slam, you're a mix of Tech <laughs> Yeah, they definitely have a lot of different, uh, like, influences in That's music. true, Eclectic. yeah. Eclectic. I can tell when I'm listening to you guys. It's, it's very, like, melodic and kind of all over the place mm-hmm. in a good way. It brings that stuff together. It's crazy how the definitions work, though. You yeah, know, yeah. like, um, like, okay, wormhole, you know, techie brutal death metal, right? Defeated sanity, yeah, is also brutal death metal that is really techie, <clears throat> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there is technical brutal death metal and brutal technical death metal. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they are actually different things. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, wow. it's like, so pre- dumb. like putridity <laughs> is like. <laughs> Brutal death metal, that's technical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when did all of this start? Like, when, because we were talking about this a few weeks ago on the podcast. Like, when did metal start branching out into all of these, like, super underground things? Like, when did they start calling slam slam? When did they start calling brutal death metal? Um, I think they started calling slam slam after uh, Devourment. Okay. Because, like, that was the first band that just 
played slam riffs or you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. constantly uh and I, like brutal death metal i guess i came around i don't know probably when suffocation and stuff like that maybe. yeah, yeah, yeah. discord i think discord yeah, oh, yeah. that, that makes, that makes like, the most sense all right this is just nuts brutal yeah because like, i heard that when i was pretty young I was probably like 16 but to me there was like death metal and then there was brutal death metal and that was pretty much it you know so suffocation dying fetus cannibal corpse that was all like death metal and then brutal death metal was like the first decrepit album disgorge there were some other bands. There was this other band, Cinerary. Have you ever heard that? No. It's like the older precursor to Slam. Because I remember when we had a we had a, a sound guy named my, uh, Mike Torres. Yeah, uh, you know, I know Mike. Yeah, I love okay. Mike. Yeah. But he would be like, "Dude, this is like Slam," and I'm like, "What the hell is yeah, that?" Yeah, we didn't really. I didn't. I was really like, know "What is that?" And he's like, "It's just shit that like slams." I'm like, "Okay." Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I didn't know like what that meant, you know? uh -huh. but because I'm like kind of older, I guess. Dude, is, but then I got—I kind of like when I met you guys, and like you kind of got me into a couple bands. So I was like, "All right, I, I get it. Now. I get—I get what's going on here." Explaining it is really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like hearing about it because it's just so silly. Yeah, you it know? really it's is. Like, yeah, yeah. It really is. It, it gets sillier and sillier as you go. But but yeah, rad. you start to like crave it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're like, I gotta hear something that's like even more brutal somehow. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Well, like, yeah, I follow all the, like, YouTubes and shit like that. Like, uh, I just know Slam Brutal Worldwide. Brutal Music with a K. Have you seen <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's, like, the best one, in my opinion. Really? I found some good shit off of there, dude. Dude, usually the stuff, <laughs> the way I keep up is I listen to every new Standard Elite yeah, band. Yeah. Okay, I give it yeah. at least one spin, you yeah, know? Yeah, 100%. And usually it, it always clicks at least, like, 70%. You know, it's yeah, not yeah. always, like, exceptional, but it's, like, yeah, yeah. it's got something right. Yeah, yeah, I do that too. I follow all the. I started following a lot of those labels on Instagram. That's like mm -hmm. a, a good way to hear it. And then all the like Indonesian and like Thailand, all yeah. that stuff. I'm they're like, on something else over there. They're dude. on some. I want to go. Yeah, he, he <laughs> I want to go. Literally, Naveen has been talking about it nonstop. Going be so to Thailand to and just checking go out the scene and like try to chill with those guys. Yeah, and maybe go to a show or something. What's like the name of insane. that? What's the name of that dude who's like at the forefront of Larry Wang? Yeah, Larry Wang. There dude. we go. <laughs> yeah. I was telling her, I was like, dude, we should get him on the podcast. Yes. That would be sick, <laughs> right? So what's, would be sick. what's the history behind Larry Wang? Like uh, he's been in like a, just a bunch of bands that are like awesome, awesome. Yeah. Like And yeah. he has like a label or like a merch thing or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's doing uh what is it, Fat Double Large? Yeah. Is that it? Have you ever met him? No. Have you ever talked to him? No. He's just a legend. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. He played in the U.S., like recent, like I think it was like Las Vegas Death Fest or something. Oh. He played Maggot Colony. Played Maggot Colony. That is, is such a sick band name. Yeah. <laughs> <Maggot> <laughs> <Colony>. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. So you got into Slam in 2012. So I have been wanting to ask you this. You have a brother, Noni. Mm -hmm. We met Noni, I think, before we met you, because he was filling in for uh, Within Destruction. No, we had already known Sandra because we, already we stayed oh, we at his house. You. Yeah, we stayed at your guys' oh, house. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Either way, we toured with Noni. And, like, Noni is older than you, right? By yep. 11 months. Yep. We talked about this the other night. So did one of you get into metal first and lead the other person? We kind of got into it at the same time because we were, like, we... Since we're 11 months apart, like, everything that happens with us is, like, happening at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, like, we kind of got into it at the same time. Um... Like Guitar Hero introduced us to a lot of music. Um, I found Godsmack on a, a, a Navy commercial back in the day. <coughs> I, I, like re I remember that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. wasn't it? Was it I Stand Alone? I don't. I don't even remember. I, I remember the same commercial. But I got yeah. a, I got like a Godsmack CD from the library, and it was like not like that. And I was like, this is trash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I eventually found that song, and I could spin that song. But uh, yeah. Were your parents like, "What's wrong with my kid? He listens to, I think the devil's music." I think so at like certain points, but they were they've always been like pretty open minded. I do remember the first car ride because like we used, like when my mom would drop us off at school, I'd make like CDs and like of like shit I downloaded from Limewire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And we listened to it on the way to school. <clears throat> and I remember the day that I had a I put Morbid Angel songs on the CD, and she was like. I like the music you li you listened to yesterday better. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, I was always kind of like, I knew my parents were going to like not get it. Mm-hmm. So I'd kind of just like not play it. Oh, yeah. They kind of get it now. Yeah. Well, yeah. your parents, I mean, they were at the Nashville show that you played with Inferior. Yeah. And they <laughs> both had, they on had, d- merch, they on had merch on. They were killing yeah, it. They were, they were just full blown fans. It was so cute. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. So you got into Godsmack and then you got Noni into No, no. Actually the Godsmack thing was kind of an isolated incident, but it like mm-hmm. triggered my like my my ear for that was there. Mm-hmm. But that era, what took over was just purely just all like dirty south hip hop. Oh yeah. That Hell was yeah. everything I listened to up until eighth grade. Like three six and I love three six mafia, <coughs> Lil John, um Crime Mob. Petey Pablo, Crime Mob. Yeah, I love Crime Mob. Um Mystical. Yeah, there's a lot, a little scrappy. Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, but then like uh, eighth grade, I was like playing Guitar Hero too. So like, I was like, you know, getting back into hearing that kind of stuff, you know, that I knew I liked, but I just wasn't exposed to enough of to like, you know, because I, I never had like a family member or friend who was into it who could like show it to me. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So it was always me and Noni kind of just bouncing off of each other. So Guitar Hero got us into a lot of bands. And then like from there, I think Iron Maiden and Metallica were on this one. And I loved Iron Maiden. I like would binge every Iron Maiden album. I was like that was like all I was listening to in eighth grade. Then I've got into Megadeth, Metallica. Then I found Death. I heard Crystal Mountain. Oh wow. And uh I got I I just got over the harsh vocal thing. You know, because like you didn't like it at first. I, I didn't not like it, but I was like resistant to it. I was too. I I would find myself listening to songs like I got into kind of metalcore. I went from new metal to metalcore into death metal. But when I was into metalcore, I at first was listening for the singing part. Mm -hmm. I was like, "When's the singing part? Let's get to it." You know. So it took me a minute, but eventually I got way into it with honest lamb of god is what pulled me into really really liking screaming vocals a lot i feel like like you have like transitionary vocals Mm -hmm. like you know yeah totally Totally. like like chuck was like not super like brutal you know yeah yeah. Yeah, that's true chuck and then like brutal and then like morbid angels like a little bit more brutal yeah Yeah. yeah. uh then eventually you get like i don't know like maddie way yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <Maddie Way. laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Same here. Actually, the first the first time I ever heard anything like that, I just thought it was great. I was just down. Really? Well, were yeah. you, were you listening to vocals when you first heard it? No, I'm just I was I'm a drummer. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But I mean, I listened to like Green Day and Nirvana, and then I don't know, like Rage Against the Machine or something, and then I heard Sepultura, and I was just like. This is so sick. Like I'm it. listening to Death Metal, even though it's not. I Death feel like Sepul- I feel like they're a good that's intro kind of, band. That's an in between. Yeah, yeah. With they're the vocals. great in between. But I didn't think that when I first heard it. I thought it was like, de- I thought that was Death Metal. I was like, these are Death Metal vocals. Like, I can't let my parents find out about this. Oh, yeah. Can't get heavier. Even though my yeah. parents are like the most open-minded, like they they never even said anything negative about it. I was still just kind of like self-conscious. Like they're not gonna get this. <laughs> See, I, I always had Noni as a as a you know since we were always into it together like yeah it's actually pretty easy you know to same like, with me and my brother yeah my, my brother's eighteen well one of my brothers is only eighteen months younger than me so we were always like into the same music and like listening to music in our room and shit yeah and then we always had a lot of friends in the area so and our like our house was kind of like the house that everybody hung out at so we would just like hang out and like listen to metal play PlayStation. Did you play guitar way before all of this, or was guitar something? No, I got guitar after I got into metal. You okay, know who wow. really made me want to get the guitar though was Buckethead. Okay, wow. Because like I don't know, like Soothsayer, which I heard on Guitar Hero, was like I was like, dang, like he's just he's just doing his thing. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you didn't play guitar at all, and then no, not not yet. You already listened wow. to like. A lot of guitar crazy music. Death metal stuff? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, guitar came after Iron Maiden, after Metallica. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But before death. Like, yeah. I remember I got, okay, I got my first guitar in December 2008. And I remember listening to Crystal Mountain for the first time in like April or something like that, probably. <laughs> like, 
springtime. So guitar has kind of triggered me to like look for more music. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Because <coughs> you just get a, just a little bit more interested when you get for the sure. guitar. Absolutely. So that's how you just after death. Where did you go? You got further into. Um. All right. So now we're going. Now we're going to freshman year. Yeah. <laughs> freshman year, I I discovered something like amazing. Um, we. Okay. No, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We done hallucinogens. <laughs> um. So, I had already listened to like basically every like the first four or five Megadeth albums like like at least once at that time. But in ninth grade, I kind of realized like how amazing rust in peace is and like how many layers there really are to that. And like Marty Friedman and stuff like that. Like a lot of stuff started clicking to me Mm -hmm. about like why this is superior to like a lot of this other stuff, you know, like I kind of knew it was like, it was like really good. But then I started to like pick up on like, okay, this is why it's really good. And like that made me put it like on a higher pedestal, you know? So I got obsessed with that album. I, I like learned like everything, you know, I, well, I tried. I still sucked. I, it was my freshman. I, wow. I hadn't been playing for a year yet, but. You I weren't was good like, right when you um, started? I feel like you were pretty good. Right? I know, I do too. I feel like you were good when you started. I, uh, or maybe I don't know. You, or you just, well, you're talking about it. You got really obsessed really quickly. I'm yeah. kind of getting that vibe from you. I think Rust in Peace is that album that made me like try and get good because like, like I saw the value in it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and there were like things that were like, if you're learning like a bunch of like Megadeth riffs and uh, Metallica riffs and stuff like that and uh, Kirk Hammett solos and, you know, and then you go to like a Marty Friedman one, you know, and like it's just like so out of the box and intense and you kind of like, you know, this is such a guitar player thing, but you like, you kind of like can't grasp like what you're hearing. What is, yeah, yeah what yeah. you're hearing yeah. and what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Like it's so dense and uh you know i was like i was like trying to figure it out and i couldn't figure it out and like i learned them note by note and like try my best to to do it you know and i'd always just be like playing the notes but like there was always like this mystery behind it Mm -hmm. like and none of my guitar teachers could crack it because like you know they were they suck. I swear. <laughs> they didn't suck. They didn't suck. They didn't suck. They were really good yeah, at, yeah. At, at their own thing, but yeah, like yeah. not. They weren't really aware of that. Kind yeah. Of stuff. yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah. Um, that mystery, you know, kind of like drives you. You know, I like. I wanted to know. Like, I want to know. I like it so yeah, much. Yeah. I want to know. Yeah. Uh, and I could never figure it out. Yeah, honestly, to this day, like, I still can hardly figure it out. With Marty, yeah. in, in, mm-hmm. with him in particular, you know, he's just different. Yeah, but, is, uh, is he your, like your favorite guitar player? Yeah, he's one of my all time favorites. Who else are your all time favorites? All right, we got Marty Friedman, Jason Becker, those two. Okay. Like yeah. they're like a duo kind of thing. I, mm-hmm. lo- I love them both equally. Tom Quayle, it's like a fusion guy. He's like, what we're, have you ever, have you ever seen me do this? <coughs> yeah, yeah. This, this stuff. What is that called? Hybrid picking. Oh, okay, that's hybrid picking. Yeah, uh, like that's my Tom Quayle worship. Um, yeah, those three, and then Brendan Small from Death Clock. Oh yeah, um, and his Galacticon stuff. Yo, he is so underrated. Really? <laughs> like, like that's because he's a cartoon. That's his problem. <laughs> it's true. That is true because I know every Death Clock song, but I don't know what he looks like. Oh. Yeah, I have no idea. Like a cartoon. Just like a guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's he's just he looks like he could work in an office. Honestly, he <laughs> just looks like a guy. But just I think that's like. <laughs> I think that just looks, I think that's like so cool though. Cause he's done like, you know, he made a TV show. He made two sick TV shows. What's the other TV show he made besides uh, Metal Home, Home Movies? Oh, he made Home or, oh. or he was in that at least. Okay. I he know a, that. Yeah. He was a writer on or something. Dude, that was such a good show. It's not around anymore though, right? Uh, they play it at like 3, eight, three or 4 a.m. though yeah. on Adult Swim. Yeah. Brandon Small. I really like that guy. He's sick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. I think. I think I would say those are my top four. I mean, I I mean, you know, I love like Ingve and stuff like that, but I don't like, you know, those are the those are the four where like we're like, I'm like studying really hard on, you know. <clears throat> Got it. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, and one more actually, Sims. Sims Cash. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Sims yeah, is yeah. so goddamn good at guitar. What's Wait, up with him lately? Yeah. Got a Grammy. I saw that, but what was it for? 
don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. It's a no Grammy, though. Yeah. It's a, it is it's a Grammy. Cool. He's got one. <laughs> but he, I can't remember the last band that Sims played in. Uh, I thought but it was going to be an alluvial. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That would have been sick. That would have been sick. Any band that he would have been in, that would have been sick. Yeah, he he, uh, opened my ear a little bit to, like, get out of the box. I was in a box, you know. I was, like, classic guitar player stuff, like, playing these same scale shapes. And uh, I heard, like, some stuff that he did where it was, like, so out there. And it kind of, like, gave me this realization, like, I can p- kind of just play any note anywhere at any given mm-hmm. time. Like it's it's not in- improbable, you know. Like yeah. mm-hmm. I don't need to just fit these shapes, you know. Yeah. I'm t- I trained my fingers to do that, and that's what they're used to. But they can do more. Yeah. yeah. And Sims taught me that. That's awesome. I wonder that a lot about people who are super like highly trained. How much it keeps them in a box? Just because you get used to all of these, like you're saying, patterns that are s- that's how it's supposed to be, but. Mm-hmm. In art, while you can learn all of those things, I think that the coolest players are the ones who aren't doing the totally in the box stuff. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. But the way that I see it, though, is like not in the box really is you just know so many different boxes. Y- you're yeah, jumping from totally. box to box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. um, and then when you're in the box, I think just means that like you're just you just been on one path. But like, okay. Fretboard visualization, like that's a huge thing with 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 guitar. This is me giving one of my classic guitar lessons. Let's have that's awesome. Thing. Let's okay. hear. I'm taking notes. Yeah. Um. Fretboard visualization. There's no one way to do it. Like, um, a lot of people tell you, like, this is how I do it. This is the way that I do it, and, and like, this is what you should do, et cetera, et cetera. Like, a lot of people learn like the scale shapes. All right, they learn like the three note per string. Yeah. They learn the Berkeley position shapes, and they get taught like, here's the seven modes. Learn all these all these uh, shapes, you know. Memorize all of them, um, and that's how you learn the notes on where you know where the notes are on the fretboard, right? That kind of works, you know. Like, okay, now that person can see they can learn the fretboard going up and down, <coughs> and then up and down, you know. Yep. But there's a lot more directions to go than just up and down and over. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So that. You know, it shows one avenue that you're probably going to use, but, like, that's not all you want to do, right? So then maybe you learn something else and you learn scales on one string. So it's like, okay, now I can go left and right on one string. So now you have two directions. But you, you only get so many, so many notes. At, uh, you yeah. know, it, it, it's hard to, to do that. So you need to expand how you visualize to see all of these directions. Mm-hmm. If you can't see... Like, how to get from point A to point B in many different ways, then you need to work on your fretboard visualization. There's like, really, there's infinite ways. There's like infinite, you know, um, musical ideas. Uh, So, fretboard visualization needs to be a lot of them. And I don't think anybody can ever discount ever trying something new because you'll always see something else mm-hmm. do you let your ear how much does your ear play into it though rather than like it's mostly my ear yeah so you're not really like for me i'm kind of like letting my ear guide me like when i write stuff um and like the technicality part is kind of secondary to that yeah i totally agree to that you know is uh, it's like that for you too sometimes it screws you yeah but i also see that as like I'm leveling myself up right here. Yeah. I want to be able to do this. And yeah. I just made myself have to learn how to do it. So yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you want to, I want to go somewhere. So I know, okay, I need to learn X, Y, and Z in order to do that thing. Like it's yeah. kind of utilitarian for me personally. Yeah. No, I, 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 that was one of the things about writing a guitar pro that was actually good for me. Like I don't do it now because I don't want to different story, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, I would like write things in guitar pro and I would, I would even think like, you know, like the fingerings, I'd see them in my head. Um, you know, like punch them in, like, yeah, I could do this. Like these, this makes sense. Um, then I finish it and then I play it back and it'll be like so fast that it's like, huh? Like I actually can't do it that fast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I'll fall in love with it. I feel like, but it's so sick. <laughs> it's so sick. I can't, I can't, I can't not do this. So yeah. yeah. 
you just got to grind it out now. Yeah. 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 And I, I am pretty good under pressure. So I put that pressure on myself and I do it. Yep. Likewise. That's awesome. Likewise. Well, take us, what's up with the guitar pro thing? Is it because you don't want to get too like demo itis out? Uh, all right. Yeah. Guitar pro like sounds like shit. Like yeah. I just hate yeah. how it sounds. Yeah. Um, and I, feel like I'm at a point where I can say what I want with my fingers. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think that I, I don't think that I need guitar pro to do anything for me. And I like playing guitar. I don't like playing computer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just more fun for me. I feel more connected to what I'm doing. Um, it feels organic. Like then the subtleties of like me are in there, you know, like I love to do like little goofy vibrato things, you know, here and there <laughs> that are like, you know, it's, it's me just doing me and like on the note, but like now it's also part of the riff, you know, yeah. and you can't notate that in guitar pro. Yeah. Totally. And yeah, it's really just the subtleties. Um, and like my focus, you know, if mm -hmm. I'm just playing guitar and clicking control R and control Z. Yeah. It's way I'm, better. I'm yeah. I'm just in the way zone. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I think you're bringing up a good point that guitar pro is a great tool for like expanding, doing things that you cannot do yeah. if you aren't that advanced of a player but and that'll help you become even more advanced of a player 100 percent. but you can you know over time it's kind of like a like training wheels a little bit to yeah. to do like super technical stuff yeah and also like you if you're in a tech death band you have to do it anyways like that's the yeah, only way to yeah. like learn <laughs> like the kind of <laughs> <It's> stuff <true. laughs> or to give it to the other members of the band yeah mm -hmm. that's the thing for us is so naveen when he writes he I guess you've maybe written a few things with Guitar Pro, but when you write... I've you never write. written anything I've liked in Guitar Pro. Nothing. Nothing. Like, it just sounds... I don't know. There's something about... Like, uh, yeah, I'm using my ear, but I'm also... like, um, There's, like, spontaneity happening. You know, and you're, like, kind of playing guitar. Like, oh, that sounds kind of... Like, oh, I did that. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Let me oh, yeah. go further in that direction. If I'm just in Guitar Pro, I don't have anything to, like bounce back and forth between you know because i'm bouncing back between what sounds cool and what i know how to do and then it's like they're kind of making this like riff mm -hmm. you know i don't try to write riffs you know i'm not like okay i gotta force a riff you know it's i'm playing guitar and i'm like oh that's pretty cool yeah yeah okay and then yeah, I just yeah, like yeah record it you just try and feel it out <laughs> yeah feel it out and then i like kind of go with my ear like what i want to hear and then i'll even go even further and then like i don't know all the scales like memorized, you know what I mean? So I'll sort of like just derive scales off of like the riff I'm using, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, oh, that riff Like using the same notes? Uh, Yeah, or like if I'm writing a riff, I'll be like, okay, this sounds pretty cool. And then I'll figure out what key it could be in. There's like a few different ones it could be. And then from there, I'll either like tweak it a little bit and then write more riffs that kind of go with mm -hmm. it or, or not. That's just a tool, you know? Um. Lately, I've been doing that because I've been trying to make more, like, refined songs. So that's more closely to how I would write in Wormhole. Yeah. Like, Wormhole yeah, is, it like... It sounds like it. Wormhole is not, like, diatonic at, yeah. like, a lot oh, of times, yeah. you know? So Definitely it's going to be, like, crazy random notes. But they're pretty random. Like, it, uh, it almost doesn't matter at, at, <laughs> at a certain point, you know? Like, it's a slam <laughs> one, three, three, two, one, <clears throat> or is it one, three, three, four, two, you know? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but you guys have all those like riffs that are more like cording. Yeah, cool super. Kind of yeah, yeah. So, but like, like, so the diatonic riffs are. I'm, I'm was explaining my what I was telling you before about fretboard visualization. You know, diatonic stuff. I see the notes that work. There is no trial and error. I'm, I'm. There might be trial and error of like what note I want, but there won't yeah. be a trial and error of does this note work in that key. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But with like the brutal death metal stuff, like you can kind of just do whatever you want as long yeah, as it yeah. sounds cool. It's better to yeah. turn that. I noticed with like, if you're trying to write sick brutal death metal, mm -hmm. turn all of that off. Yeah. So I just try and combine it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I just try and like, uh, like, so in wormhole, it's like, it's got to be tech and slam, right? So I'm going to do like melodic and tech and then like <laughs> stupid and slam. So you got to get from diatonic and pretty to like caveman and shitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like those two things don't work together if you just put them next to each other yeah yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. you might get lucky but yeah. you probably won't it sounds like uh like out of nowhere yeah it's like abrupt so you have yeah, to yeah. find a way to finesse it 
Yeah. And that's the toughest thing about like writing in that, in that style for me right now is how do I finesse brutal death metal to pretty and vice versa? Um, and usually like what I'll do is like, I'll do like, um, I'll, I'll do like a slammy riff or something where I'm just doing like straight up chugs type, type dealio chugs, random patterns and just groovy rhythm. Some, something like that. Um, and then I like to take the tails because I'm a firm believer and you need to like modify the tails yeah, to yeah. inject some life in, to keep the life in the riff, you know, uh, so yeah, you, you don't get too, uh, repetitive. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Um, so I like try to like insert something diatonic in that tail, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. to try and like, or the other way around. Start, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Start trying to like bridge, bridge the gap and then lean into the next one and like slowly go down. So the, um, best example uh, is Elysium on the new wormhole? Noni wrote that song. It used to be called Noni God. <laughs> Noni, <laughs> Noni is a god. For those yeah. of you who don't know him, but like it starts out super pretty, and it's like just starts in injecting like chugs, you know. So it goes from pretty to a little bit like pretty and fast to like pretty and groovy, and then it goes to um, pretty but chuggy, but the chugs are diatonic. You know, it's like mm -hmm. diatonic to like uh, yeah, yeah. E minor. <clears throat> and then we have this rhythm going like with like pretty stuff and chugs. Um, and, the, uh, you know, and then the next part, take the same rhythm from the chugs, but now chromatic chugs on the same rhythm. So now we're in brutal death metal no mode. You know, we just switched. <laughs> yeah. And then we go into a slam. So it's just like a progression, like a slowly introducing the slam element. I love it. That's awesome. So... Is it only you and Noni writing wormhole stuff? Um, yeah, it goes this way. Me and Noni make our, our songs. Usually it's four songs of mine, four of his. Um, you don't collaborate on the songs. We collaborate on parts. We don't collaborate on songs. Like, like Arranging it. Okay, no, I misspoke. Okay, we, we write our own riffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then usually we'll collaborate on like a slam. You know, like how we're going to make the slam like super sick. You know? But all the other parts are kind of i we trust each other usually you know um if if he thinks mine isn't like you know missing something you know i trust him and i'll you know edit you know so there is some kind of collab in that yeah, yeah yeah um but we don't really like sit in the room a whole lot together we've done it like once on the last record and once on the one before that yeah. how do you think it turns out you don't you just don't like it's just not your vibe <coughs> not the way that you I don't know. I think, I mean, we're just, it just works. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what we got works. I mean, if totally. I have my inspirations. Noni has his inspirations. But like, kind of like, oh, yeah. Sorry. I, was like, What's <laughs> going on? I don't know what he was pointing at. So long as both of our, as long as our songs fit the criteria of tech and slam, <coughs> doesn't matter. I love this. Yeah. So, but it can never go outside of tech and slam. It has to be tech and slam. It can be literally anything. If it can fit that criteria. <laughs> I love that. I'm down. Oh, so how long ago did you guys start <laughs> playing together? Uh, so Wormhole had a proto band called Rotting Phallus. <laughs> yeah, you kind of had to switch up the name yeah, as far yeah. as marketability yep. goes for that <laughs> one, right? I'm sure your parents loved that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one they really didn't get it. <laughs> did, they, did they wear the shirts for that band? Uh, yeah, but we, <laughs> we, we printed a picture of our cat, uh, like a cartoon picture of our cat on it. So it was like... It was like a picture of the, the cartoon cat, and it's, the cat said "slam." So my mom loved that. So she she was rocking it. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! No, she oh can't she god. can't read it. She couldn't read that it says "rotting phallus." So True. it's like it's just lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it began. You guys had rotting phallus. Yeah. And then it's like 2014, 15, or something like that. And um, we did like a demo. Uh, and some of the songs from the first record were demos on that rotting phallus demo like nurtured in a poisoned womb used to be called green eggs and slam <laughs> and uh <laughs> yeah uh, is that uh weakest among us is what you're talking about no no genesis actually nurtured oh, in a poisoned okay. womb was on genesis okay. I yeah heard, i haven't heard that one uh don't bother because okay. <laughs> the weakest <laughs> among us i yeah I heard, I heard that one like when it came out pretty much i used to oh, yeah. listen to it it's good sick yeah i uh I like to just disregard the first one. 
We yeah. do that too. We have an yeah, EP I'm called Primal, like, and we just it. pretend it just doesn't exist. <laughs> and we're like, all good. I think what? Archbar <laughs> does that too with the uh, All Shall Align, like their first one. Oh, really? Like, they're, they're, I remember they played it live, and they're like, "You can't buy the song, or you, you'll never buy the song on a CD or yeah. something like that." But I usually do that with pretty much everything I've made, other than like whatever I've made in the last like two years. Oh yeah, like everything else. <laughs> Dude, you know what's crazy? Absolute dog shit. Don't listen to it. <laughs> I I used I used to jam the. Uh, the electronica shit. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that's I awesome. actually saw you on tour do that one time. Okay. In uh, Baltimore? Ram's Head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that. was like... What's Ram's Head? Ram's Head Live. It's like... It was it's when I was opening up for Animals. Well, yeah, I remember that. We, I don't think we've it's, played Ram's Head. It's right by Soundstage, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, everything goes to Soundstage. Yeah, it's just a better place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that Ram's Head place is, like, big, though, right? Really big. Yeah. Really? Is it bigger than Soundstage? <coughs> yeah. yeah, it reminds me of like a House of Blues vibe. Yeah, totally. Jeez. Yeah, I'm always, I always kind of forget because Soundstage seems small to me. I don't know why, but when Low I Low ceiling, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's why. But when I look at the cap, I'm always surprised when stuff, like huge stuff is going there. Because I'm like, wow, you can fit that many people in Soundstage? That's insane. Yeah, it gets crazy in there. Oh, dude. I think, no, when, when you guys were there with Whitechapel, it was like. Yeah, oh, that, that was, was crazy. Yeah, that was yeah. sick. That We've was played really there sick. with like Black Dahlia. It was crazy. Uh, yeah. Don't have any rules though. We just played there. Uh, with Revocation. Yeah. It was packed then too. Like yeah, there were a bunch of good. people. Then, were you out Oh yeah, show? I was out that one. There yeah, were a bunch yeah, of people there. They but, uh, crank the AC in there. <laughs> when you first <laughs> show up to like load in, <laughs> yeah. you're like, dude, is it really this cold? Like, I hate this. This is fucking oh, insane. Oh, me too. I do not like being cold when I'm on stage. Me too. And it really sucks if you're the opener because then it's like kind of cold when you play. It I've, sucks. I've, I played a show in a in a hoodie because of that. I hate that. Uh -huh. It fucking pisses me off. Yeah. I like it to be like a hundred. I want it to be super hot. Me there. too. I want to honestly not really be able to breathe. Yeah, I want it to be hot. I want, to, I want it to be an experience. Disgusting. Hot and lots of fog machines. Yeah, yeah perfect. Like a perfect. Fucking sweat I love lodge. just like and especially if I'm like breathing in smoke from a fog machine and then I take a breath and my hair goes <laughs> down my throat. It's <laughs> like the struggle, the real yeah. struggle. I like a struggle uh, show. Drummers always have like all these like crazy fans, you know, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh, you can use my fan," and I always turn it off. I no fan ever. I've actually been. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, no you should get I like a it fan. to be hot. Yeah. I think that would fit into your like heartthrob persona if you got a fan <laughs> to that's blow true. your locks back when you stood up when you got close to the stage <laughs> monitors. No way. <laughs> no way. Yeah, you're already you got enough going on already. <laughs> he's already, already hot enough. It. He doesn't need the fan. I know it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> no one else knows the joke, but we keep we saw uh, in Fury with Sanjay like a month ago, and we're like, dude, we just kept thinking about how you're the you're so hot. Couldn't up take there my eyes off stage. of him. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Couldn't take my eyes off of you. You're just ripping. <laughs> <laughs> it's under those lights at the end. It was just a special it show. Was that guess. was that was the sickest I've ever seen in Fury for sure. Oh, it was. That 100%. was super I wonder why. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was really sick. It was. Uh, you guys are. <laughs> Going out on tour again? Yeah, with Enterprise Earth. Oh, that'll uh, be sick. Crown Magnetar and Tracheotomy. Yeah, someone was asking if you're excited about that. There's a oh, question Oh, I'm excited from the about chat. that. I'm excited about that. Honestly, like, in, in between all my bands, like, I get to do different types of tours. Like, over the over the summer, I did that uh, Wormhole Analepsy. Oh, yeah. Slam tour. All Slam fans. In Fury Headliner, all Tech Death fans. Gorod tour, also... With Wormhole, all Tech Death fans. Yeah. Get to do a Deathcore tour, all Deathcore fans. Well, not all, but um, we did the Necrogoblicon tour a little while ago. Yeah. And that was like the broadest spectrum of yeah, like yeah. metal fan, you know? Yep. And I don't know. I, I, I love that there's like so many different uh, types. Um, <coughs> totally. And uh, yeah. It's cool. It's cool that there's enough fans for that to happen now. That's true. You know, like 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Wasn't really the case. It was like metal and hardcore, and that was pretty much it. That's true. I always find it fascinating. Like, we'll go to different kinds of shows here. We went to that Necro Goblicon show. There was really no one at that show that I ever see at other shows. It's crazy. They have such I'm a. Like, who are these people? Yeah, I know. It's like almost people who are into Guar and Comic Con, and they have such an interesting crowd. Like, they've grabbed a bunch of people who I don't even know go to other metal shows, really. You know what I noticed on that tour? Kids, literal kids. 
Wow. Like people bring in their <laughs> six year olds. Oh yeah, yeah. Like every show there was at least one one or two kids. Definitely yeah. more than that. <clears throat> and every show, every couple of shows, there was a lady who painted herself green too. <laughs> I know they have that <laughs> that goblin man. You can do a lot of go- oh cool marketing God. with yeah, that. Yeah, I love the goblin. I'm so I sold on the goblin. You know the goblin sings. The uh, dude, I'm like, yes, the goblin has to <laughs> sing. Everyone already thinks the goblin sings anyway. Yeah. Even when Post Malone was on Joe Rogan, he's like, dude, they have a goblin that sings. And that was when they didn't have that. But everyone just thought that anyway. So You I would expect that. it. Yeah. I, even when we went on tour, I was like, wait, he doesn't sing? Like, he, wh- He's just a goblin? He's just up there. Yeah. His thing. yeah, dude, it's so cool. And uh, yeah, all the, I love the, what's the name of the show right now with John Goblicon? Oh, so have you watched that? That character, I, I love the, the Goblicon character. Yeah, I like, love it. Um, you know what I learned, though? That John Goblicon and Necro Goblicon are two different, like, entities. What? Yeah. They're not, uh, they're not, like, they didn't start together. Oh, really? What? Yeah, they're, like, they're, like, different identities entirely that are, like, teamed up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's just so it was way more complex than I thought. <laughs> so John that Goblicon like a com- was a character uh, yeah. before Necro Goblicon yes. asked him to join the band. Or is the other way around? I don't know. He's not a character. He's a real life goblin. He's a real goblin. guy. Yeah, he's a real goblin. Yeah. Real life guy. Yeah. I've seen him backstage. That's G- Yeah, he's a goblin the whole time. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but so that's insane to me. I can't believe it. But yeah, I got to I got to I got to uh, look into it, uh, uh, look into the history a little <laughs> bit more. But I, I was getting somebody was explaining it to me and, and I was like, I was like, I just assumed that they were just always the same thing, you know? Yeah, I figured that, like, Nikki made up the goblin or something. That's fascinating. Wow. But, yeah, if you guys out there haven't seen right now with John Goblicon, I will sometimes just watch, throw it on. It's hilarious. Yeah. Such good, funny interviews. There's one that they did with uh, Bill Oberender, who, do you know Bill? Okay, he used to do merch for the contortionist. He's done merch for us, and I think he does uh, the Offspring now. He's really moved up in Damn. the yeah, dude. That's what you can do if you enter in just being a cool person and do working. You'll end up working for the hugest bands over time. Like in Fury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how did you? Oh yeah. How did you Let's start playing that. with In Fury? Well, I filled in for them in 2019. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, not like a European tour or something. Yeah, the Tech Trek, so sick. I, I bet. Was like, Mike um, couldn't make it or what? Yeah, um, and like I don't know, learning the songs then was like way harder than it is now. But <coughs> definitely, like I got like better, better from that gig. Like there was like some stuff in there that was like, I can't do this right now. I actually have to, I gotta grind, you know. I gotta grind it out and like actually like yep get my chops up <coughs> for this. Totally. Um, and then. On Shadow of Intent, on that tour, 2022, I was playing with Wormhole, and uh, we were at the Oklahoma show, and they all, they, they like, like Spencer texted me, he was like, yo, come over to the van real quick, and they were all, like, <laughs> out there in a line, Mal- Malcolm sitting on the, on the, uh, on the chair, and, uh, a sit down. The chair. <laughs> and he, he was like, I, I kind of knew what was going to happen, actually, honestly, yeah, yeah. but he, he, he did, like, one of his Malcolm things, and he's like, Mike's leaving the band. And then I knew what they were going to ask me. Yeah. And I was like, <coughs> They're like yes. we just wanted to tell you that, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's, that's it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was like immediately like, yeah, I'm in. That's so, sick. Uh, but you... Uh, we guessed it in two seconds. Remember? Oh, yeah, when Mike said he was quitting. Because I think that Mike was tracking something here. Yeah, he was, he was like... Was oh, like oh. He was like, yeah, I'm quitting the band. And we we're like, we're like oh, Sanjay they got joining, Sanjay. Huh? And he was like, oh. Uh. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> we knew right away. I mean, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Because, well, I know that Malcolm's a fan of you. I know you're a fan of In Fury. And your style complements his very well. Yeah, you, you want to know why? One of my biggest inspirations for like my whole like counterpoint thing was Malcolm's Loathing Requiem stuff. Dude, that yeah, yeah. stuff it's is crazy. so sick. So... You know, I never actually, like, learned one of those songs, but, like, I was getting into that when I started writing my own music, so I was, like, trying to imitate that. Um, so, like, a lot of my stuff is already Malcolm-inspired, so... Fits. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, did you know... How did you know him in the first place? It's a 
it's cool actually. Um, I was on my first tour ever with my band Perihelion. Um, don't look it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're listening to it um, right after this. And uh, it was like a DIY t- type of tour, and we had like a day off, and we were like around Nashville, so we went to Nashville. And like it's actually like the day our record came out, and I was just like, I was like friends with Malcolm on Facebook, and I was just like, yo, listen to this, you know, type type thing. Um, and back then he would have actually listened to it. Um, um, and I was like, yo, we're in Nashville. If you want to like hang out. And then he actually got, he actually got back to me. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so we had dinner with, uh, him and Kayla at Las Maracas, the one by Malcolm's house. And, uh, just like shooting the shit, you know? And then he took us back to his house and he was like hanging out like drinking beers. He showed us his snakes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, at that time he showed us, um, the new A Loathing Requiem, uh, Acolytes Eternal hadn't come out yet. Um, and I was like, dude, I'm over here listening to Malcolm's <laughs> Riffs. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how we met. And then uh, actually the next time I saw him is when you guys came around. And stayed oh, really? My house. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I was under the impression that you guys like went way were back. besties. Yeah, yeah. Way no, no. We, we, we met one time before that. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, because it must have been, I guess, 2014 the stuff or 2015 i the think stuff it's 2015 yeah yeah which was right before malcolm joined our band at the end of 2015 so that yeah obviously yeah, it was sense. a tour with artificial brain <coughs> yeah are you a huge fan oh of our, man I'm i can tell that when brain. i yeah when i hear wormhole i'm like these guys love artificial brain for sure it, it's it's me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and matt actually matt too they're such a good band yeah they are and s- like the the stuff that dan comes up with i just don't e- I can't even fathom how a human thinks of that stuff. It's so like it's out of the box. I was just trying to be him for like in like 2016, 17. Like that's how I wrote a lot of the stuff on The Weakest Among Us was me just trying to be artificial brain and then do slams afterwards with the yeah, same yeah. type of type of thing. Um, I just love like like going back to textures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can play the same. You can play the same chord so many different ways, and there's so many different textures. You know. Yep. So like, I started exploring like a different way to a- approach like the same chord progression I've been playing for like years, maybe, but like with crazier voicings that like have a totally different texture. Artificial yep. Brain taught me that. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, they're so good. We saw them. Uh, they played this venue here called Dark Matter last year. There were so many people there, and they just yeah, ripped. Really I ate awesome. uh. I like microdosed mushrooms <laughs> and watched their set and literally had my mind just fucking blown. Dude, I remember that show because in the inferior chat, everybody's like, yo, you going to artificial brain? And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck you guys. I want to see this band probably more oh, than yeah, yeah. Have you ever, well, I've seen him. I guess you saw him on that Black Dahlia tour. Yeah, and I saw him. We played, Perihelion played Louisville Death Fest 2015 or 16 or something like that. I don't know. 2015, and they, they, they played. That was my first time seeing them. I was like... That's yeah, it was super fucking sick. sick. It was a really good show. I, uh, so with Grey Lotus, are you allowed to say that you're writing new Grey Lotus? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway? New Grey Lotus has like been written. You know, it's kind of like. Oh, s- are you tracking it? The Grey Lotus way is a little different. We kind of do like we, we'll we'll track an entire well Ben will track an entire song, kind of like before like some things are done yet. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but uh. Something's coming out really soon. Sick. And then more stuff is going out after that. <coughs> and then Sick. another thing is coming out after that. And it's all pretty lined up. That's awesome. Are you, do you tour with Grey Lotus or? When I can. Yeah. You're a busy man. A busy I, man right here. <laughs> I know. A busy man. I, I'm shooting myself in the foot. It, <laughs> it sucks to like, Okay. I was with, with I wasn't in Grey Lotus at the start, right? But um Grey Lotus wasn't like a live band until me, Matt and um Lee and Drew ended up, you know, officially joining joining. Um it really sucks to like, you know, be part of the band, like building up to this like capability capability of like doing these things and then not being able to do them. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like it's pretty crushing but also something i realized i gotta get used to if i'm want to i want to do it the way that i'm doing it i have to get used to it um but like we were saying before 
favorite part of it is making the music. Yep. So yeah. like that's that's really like what I want to do. Um, so if I can't, you know, if I can't tour, I still want to like be able to like make, you know, be part of the music. Yeah. I mean, I think that it says a lot about you as a player and just being a partner in a band that people want you to still write the music at, even if you never tour with them. That is a thing. Yeah, I just hope, you know, I just hope my schedules line up. You know what, what would really be awesome is, like, just getting both of my bands on, like, at least two of my, ba my bands on the same tour so, like, I can yeah, just yeah. open up my schedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just get all three of them. I feel like that would be a pretty <laughs> damn good tour. <laughs> But I, uh, oh God, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, about Grey Lotus. So we did see Grey Lotus last year without you. Mm -hmm. Isaac was filling in. Yeah, for Isaac you. rules. They were one of the tightest bands I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, it was really live. sick. So they're out <laughs> there making away. you proud, man. They like, yeah, we were totally blown away. And Naveen away. and I don't bullshit if a band, you know, isn't mm -hmm. that, that clean. Oh, I appreciate that, guys. It yeah, was yeah. amazing. It was I mean, dude, also Lee... Lee, Lee is, is such an yeah, underrated vocalist. He good. is incredible. I was really impressed. He nails. He's a good singer. He's got good pitch screams. He's good at death metal vocals. He's really like the the total package, and he fits your guys' music really well because you guys are kind of like a a total package type of band. You go everywhere. Yeah, he he uh he anchors a lot of like the parts. You know, mm -hmm. like um, I mean, like like. A lot of like the Grey Lotus writing style is like like crazy riffs, you know they're they're goddamn crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, they are. <laughs> they're really but like, I'll say, like the way that like the riff is, it's like you're not it's, like supposed to like be following like every note all the the time. It's kind of like these notes making like an atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and then vocals are like driving that, you know. Um. Not all the parts, but like that's that's my favorite thing about uh, Grey Lotus is like that kind of that kind of vibe. Um, I think that that is the job of a vocalist. It's what you're saying. Like sometimes, especially in technical music, the music can sound really crazy, and then a vocalist comes on top and puts their thing down. And the vocalist is kind of like the bow yeah. that, that ties that wraps everything together. And a really good vocalist can take music like that and make it catchy in their, you know, just by the things that they write. Because a vocalist should mellow out those kind of parts. Yeah. And he does do that really well. Yeah, I, I am super blessed with vocalists. Yeah, seriously, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Julian's a great vocalist. Yeah. And there, Stevie. And I, I got two bands with Stevie, too. I mean, me and Stevie doing hella music together. But yeah, blessed with like... Um, and they're all like actually like different too, which I which I love. Yeah, definitely. Well, all of them are different. Um, actually, pretty blessed with like drummers too, Spencer and Matt. Dude, that Super Grey Lotus sick. stuff. And Casey Brands. <coughs> now. Oh yeah, Casey is sick. Yeah. I mean, anyone who can play that Grey Lotus stuff that clean. That's that the craziest was, that shit was ever. Yeah, yeah. It was truly mind blowing because n we both told Ben we're like, dude, there's no way. I was like, there's yeah. no way. <laughs> There's no way that can be pulled off live. I was like, like I don't that, know about you know? that. And Noni was like, dude, I was there when he recorded it. It's legit. I was like, <laughs> it's literally uh, insane. Because it was on uh, the tour that we did with Inferi and Archspire. Mm -hmm. They were playing it. And I was like, okay, all right. I guess I'll buy it. And then, uh, yeah, I saw him play it. And I was like, holy shit. I just yeah. got yeah, Matt's amazing. fucking. Matt is like super amazing. And told I wish, the more people, wish more people knew it. Yeah, does he play yeah, in any yeah. other bands? Yeah, wormhole. <laughs> oh, he's been wormhole live. I haven't seen, yeah, I haven't seen you guys live. I don't know. So he's in wormhole. He's in gray lotus. Oh, uh, he's got this band called the Wind in the Trees. It's sick. like a mathcore thing. Oh, Matt's sick. a mathcore guy. He loves mathcore. Like any mm. of the like, like really goofier type drum stuff that you hear on both the wormhole and gray lotus records are usually like Matt, Matt mm. stuff. As in, so will he like write? drums yeah yeah and then you guys write guitar to that no 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 he just will be like come up with the drums for the riff. well yeah, okay yeah, gotcha. here, here's what here's what would happen i write a riff in four four and matt would be like ah, i'm gonna pretend it's not four four yeah, yeah and like it's just so cool yeah that's yeah. super cool we were i was kind of asking naveen yesterday what he thinks the most important member of a band is and i think it's the drummer i mean if i'm being real i think it's whoever's making the songs yeah, that's true. That, but <laughs> even if you make a really good song and you don't have a good drummer live, 
True. Live. 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 live okay. Live. live speaking. Yeah. Drummer. Yeah. Drummer for sure. Because a drummer, you know, yeah. guitar, you can fuck up. I can fuck up. It's if you not have earplugs in and you're in the audience, it's like, can't really even hear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I bank on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all, yeah, yeah, dude. I was just thinking of Spencer. It's funny because you play with all of these musicians and they're kind of coming into my... Spencer is an insanely good... Yeah. You, you do play with really good drummers. Yep. I'm so blessed. That's why you're in good bands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, should we I take some questions Yeah, let's take some questions. Audience? Uh, well, Lee asks... Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Which oh, Lee heard hard? me saying all that nice stuff about him. Yeah. yeah. He, he <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Lee. <laughs> Uh, he's asking what was harder to learn, uh, inferior material or Grey Lotus? Uh, Grey Lotus by a long shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grey Lotus, like, okay. With the inferior stuff, I'll start with that. The inferior stuff, there's like a toolkit, you know? It's the Malcolm toolkit. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you get that toolkit and can do, like, these, like, couple things that are usually, like, in Malcolm's toughest riffs, you'll get all of them. Yeah. Almost all of the things that, you know, um... If you can do that toolkit, it's just memorization after that. Like every riff, you got you got you got the chops, you just gotta memorize it, and the memorization part is almost more annoying because there's a a lot going on a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. Grey Lotus stuff, every riff is a different toolkit, and you gotta memorize. You, the memorization is a little bit easier, but the riffs are like really dense. And there's like a lot of techniques in Grey Lotus that I only use in Grey Lotus and never anywhere else, like selective picking or something like that. Um. So, yeah, Grey Lotus. What is, wait, what's selective picking? Explain. That'd it be like me. if you did like a hammer on from nowhere and then a pick. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So Grey Lotus is the harder stuff to learn. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about wormhole? Like, let's involve wormhole too. Wor wormhole is like the most natural. The it's most your natural thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. 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 I I I can I could play a wormhole set and like right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, All right, yeah. do it. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> we need to start. We we're saying that because we have a studio. We need to like start having people do something with that. Yeah, you know, involve it. That would be sick. I know. Uh, are there any other questions in there? Uh, that's all I've got for now. All right, I have another. Let's do that one from Gmail. Oh, the one about X effects. <laughs> it's Naveen? right there. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Hey, my name is Connell. And I live in Washington State, long-time listener, first-time questioner. I couldn't get through on the voicemail line, so I'm emailing. First well, what's off, up with that? Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah. First off, I love the shit out of y'all. The podcast is the highlight of my work week, and I'm stoked you guys are back at it. Well, thank you. Uh, back so at it? What happened? Did we go somewhere? I think we stopped doing it for a while last Oh, time. yeah. Oh, when we were doing the EP. Right, yeah, yes. Yeah. We stopped for so a my question is regarding Gear Talk. We're gonna ex we're gonna make open this to Sanjay as well, but I'd really like to know what gear Naveen uses to run audio and video for his drum videos. So basically, what audio interface, what DAW, what mixer, what camera, and what editing software? All right, Whoa, everyone's all of leaving it. the Twitch right all now. All of it. <laughs> Just now we can have a DAW war. Everyone uh, likes those. <clears throat> what do I use to use the? Um, so I was using Cubase. <clears throat> but I started using Pro Tools like an adult. Like an adult? Yeah. Or maniac. <laughs> yeah, like a grown-up. See, I knew. because He made a status on his Facebook like a week ago about how he moved to Pro, Pro Tools, and everyone freaked out. <clears throat> I love it. It's really? So sick. Yeah. As long as you love it, so I don't sick. care. I but think that's actually, I had really to go is, back right? into Cubase to export a song, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I hate this. I like Ableton, Dang. but I, I love care. Ableton. <laughs> Ableton rules. If wow. you like Ableton, then you'd like Cube, uh, Pro Tools. Like, really? there's all the cool, f like a lot of the cool features from Cubase. I'm noticing that are in. Pro I mean, fuck, Ableton are in Pro Tools. Okay. Yeah. See, I start. It's I like a mix Ableton. between the two, like Cubase and Ableton. Oh. I'm like, okay, I can oh, see wow. where the they like derived certain things. I from hate it. Cubase. Yeah, I feel like different dolls are just all the same thing packaged a different way, and it's like some they of it work thing. for your workflow, some aren't. Like some of it is just like, like, I don't know. I think people worry about it too much, and they're like, yeah, hundred percent. They're, they're also like so reluctant to change, and I think that's too much because like, it can take one day. It takes one day to like learn how to use it enough for control Dude. at <laughs> R. You know, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> true. Dude, I've been using Pro Tools for like maybe 
a month. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I think I know more about Pro Tools than I did Cubase. Wow. And I used Cubase for like years. But it's a little bit unfair because I got I started using Pro Tools to work on some of Mark Lewis's shit. Like I do like the engineering parts that he doesn't want to mm -hmm. do. So like he gave me like a list of like, here's how you do all this stuff with all the key commands and shit. So it's like, I'm kind of getting like, this like welcome in. You got the cheat I, sheet. Yeah, I got the cheat sheet that I didn't have for Cubase. You know what I mean? So it could just be that I just don't know how to do that stuff in Cubase. But uh, so I'm using Pro Tools now for sure. Fucking love it. And then my gear is like actually really simple. It's like the bare minimum. And it's just like a couple of cheap drum mics on the toms, like 604s. Those are like pretty standard. And then a 50, 57 Sennheiser. I mean, sure on the snare and then trigger the kick and i have some cheap overheads and a really cheap room mic and that's it what do you use you just plug directly <laughs> but into it's it. like the ear not the gear it's true yeah um i got all sorts of shit honestly I lo i'm like i'm like kind of a gear hoarder it's like i have like one tone in my brain i just want to like get new stuff and like get to that same tone from like this new <coughs> setup now you know <coughs> kind of it's just fun i don't know yeah yeah different playing through different things is fun to me uh but like I don't know. I don't. I I like nice things, but what's more important to me is like, just do I like it? Um, and you know, usually like nice things, like yeah, you're gonna like it more and, and stuff like that. But like, um, it's hard to know like really why you like things, especially with guitars. I'm mostly talking about like like guitars on, on from that perspective. Like, you don't really know why you like guitars until you've played like a shit ton and you've played them in like a lot of different circumstances um so you don't really know what you like so um i'm totally a hypocrite on, on this because i'm like been like hoarding gear right now yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i can go both ways well i think yeah you that know like if i think having a sound in your head is important for sure and then starting like every level doing it in the right way because people mm -hmm. can have all this sick gear but it's like they're yeah. starting off at a shitty point what the hell oh my <laughs> god <laughs> i'll turn that Devine's down dad's my bad yeah, that was my <laughs> <dad>. <laughs> uh, you know what i mean so if you start with it if you if you get like one thing in the chain wrong from the beginning it's like never gonna go away yeah so like i think the first thing is make sure like if you play guitar have a guitar that sounds good with like good strings and get pickups that you like and then kind of go from there. And it's better to have like less that you know what to do with. I, th I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Especially like if you when don't you're know how to use all this gear, then it's just going to sound like total shit. But if yeah. you have like just a few things and you totally know how to use them, it's going to sound like way better. Do you know what's a good example of that? I think is like all of like the Ola England amp demos. <coughs> like he's using stuff that people say is like, shit on the forums you know type type of thing and he always makes it sound good you know oh wow like not always i guess but usually i don't watch a lot of youtube but like <laughs> he, he does like all these like you know and he I mean he's doing it doing it to sell the amp like I, I get that but like i think it's like just like proof that like every piece of gear has like a role and that role is like what you make of it also mm -hmm. kind, kind of thing like i don't know like look at like shoegaze people um, who are like play, who like tap dance on pedal boards, stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, there are like no rules at all for like making <coughs> sounds, you know? It's yeah. like, uh, um, so I don't know. I think in the metal spectrum, people just get too honed up on like, how do I sound like this? How do I sound yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah. Type totally. of thing. Well, I think it kind of happened like with like gent. Gent, Gent made That's everything so very, uh, and uh, this is not a knock on Gent. I like Gent. The, uh, this, I just think that everything became very like um, about stuff. Yeah. When Gent happened, like getting like a, fancy a, guitars yeah, and stuff. Yeah. The Axe Effects dropped when Gent came out too. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember yeah. hearing about Axe. <laughs> it's Effects. definitely Gent's fault, like a thousand percent. I remember hearing about Axe Effects for the first time, really, because like yeah, of course. through Tosin. You know what I think? You know what I what I say to somebody who like usually is like you know getting on that like dude like that tone sounds so sick like like what do I get to get to that tone like usually it's just like 
Right, he's got to pick harder. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, see, yeah. the, that <coughs> is the thing is that I don't know that it should be acknowledged that a lot of tonality is just, in, for guitar, is just in guys' hands. Yeah. Or I, I don't know about, like, the Scott was going in about the woods and stuff, and I don't know anything about that. But Dude, I can go tone. in on the hands, man. <laughs> it is on the hands. Like, I mean, like, obviously the amp is going to determine your tone, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, but, like, Good person's going to sound good on any piece of gear. Bad person's going to sound bad on any piece of, pre- piece of gear. Uh, so, like, I, all right, there's, like, subtleties in, in the hand, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, um, the way that you vibrato, how hard you push the strings, you know, th- those things, like, impact the pitch, you know? You could press really hard and push the, the note out of key, or you could have a little bit of a, of a drag and like drag the note out. Yeah. There's like, um, and then just like string noise, you know, um, um, like pick attack, you know, there's like a lot of those things that are like really like pulling what's actually, um, coming out of the, 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 it's, it's like, Pulling a sound from the the amp, you know, maybe, you know, like the pick attack, because you're picking hard, you're pulling something out of there. But if you're not doing that, like it doesn't really, you know, you don't even know that that's, that's there. But yeah, I think with the hands and like palm muting and stuff like that, like that's where more of the tone is, is coming out, is coming out of. I think a great example is like 80s shredders, you know? Yeah. Like Greg Howe, Marty Friedman, Jason Becker, Vinnie Moore, uh, all, all of those people who are like, Ingvay Malmsteen, they play kind of the same shit a lot of times, you know, but they all sound like, you know, they're their own. And, uh, you know, getting specific about it, I mean, like, Ingvay's got like, he's like really light on his like palm mutes and his picking. He's like, he's not yeah. like picking he's super hard. He's not going to sound super different on any setup. If you gave him a guitar, it's yeah. like going to sound like Ingvay. Yeah. yeah, and then like uh, Vinnie Moore picks hard as fuck. You know, he's got like, um, and then like uh, Greg Howe, he does his like sliding thing. It's like super unique to him. You know, the amp doesn't do that at all. The yeah, amp yeah. has no impact on that noise. Yeah. Um, Jason Becker is like got this like crazy, v- um, like pick attack plus vibrato uh, plus palm mute thing going. Marty Freeman's got like that perspective of no music theory which makes him just wild in, in general like oh they're wow, they're I didn't all know that he doesn't have any he's no wow. dude's free balling it wow <laughs> free balling that, it that's picking so like this is like I'm, I'm <laughs> so badass johnny t uh, he was in rivers did do you know johnny anyway he, him, yeah. he used to talk about that that the freeman yeah yeah he was so obsessed with it he would just go around talking dude that that takes me to like the the Technique thing. People get on and on about technique, but everybody's built different. Yeah. yeah. What's good for somebody is not going to be good for somebody else. Like if you can find what works for you and you know that you're not hurting yourself, you know, and you, if your standard of progress is over here and your technique can get you to where you want, fuck it, dude. You're not hurting yourself. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to get up here, you know, maybe, Maybe try something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I've always said. Like for me, it just naturally occurs. Yeah. Because if I'm playing a technique that is not efficient, then you're not going to be able to do that thing that you want to do. You're not going to be able to go whatever. Super. If I want to play like, you know, 260 BPM or whatever, it's like I can't like sit there and force it out. Like, okay, yeah. I have to play it a certain way. And that's going to naturally happen or you won't be able to do it. But, I mean, like you said, everybody's different. I mean, some people, and everybody learns different. Some people just want, like, hey, how should I do this? And then that's it. Yeah. For me, it's way more intuitive, like, how it feels. So that's why I think also, like, any professional musician, like, well, maybe not any professional, but any, like, really, truly good musician, or you're mostly self-taught, really, in the end. Like, you get these guidelines, right? And the guidelines show you, like, the routes to, to take, but like 
you need to learn how you learn on your own yeah. because you're doing the practice at home and you need to build on your lessons. The lessons are giving you um, a guideline, but you're teaching yourself how do you I fit this, you know, thing that I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Um, in the end, it's like all, all on your own. You know, you need to learn, like, how do I learn, how do I learn songs good? You know, that's, that's you. Yeah. You know, nobody's going to tell you this is how to learn a song. You're going to be, you're going to figure out eventually, like, this is the best way for me to learn songs. I also agree. Or I also think that that's a lot how, um, individual artists develop their own voice. For instance, vocal lessons that has, like become such a huge thing just people learning different vocal techniques over the past 10 years melissa cross was kind of at the forefront of that but you people get taught a lot of these same techniques and really i think the beauty is in learning all of this stuff because you should know how to do all of that stuff it's like what you're saying how do i use this technique to get to that point but then you need to like develop your own voice because that's what makes you unique as an artist and I think that like the self-taught thing you're referring to, that's where it comes in. Yeah, totally. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because like, um, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a shame a lot of times. You know, if you listen to a lot of, of metal, it's a shame when you hear something and you know that it's just like a rip from something else. Like, especially if, like, the song's sick, and then, it, but it's, like, that, like, eats away in your head, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. like, <clears throat> like, it's just, it's just the same exact thing, you know, and like, I mean, obviously, everybody plays the same slam riffs, like, but that's, like, the genre, you know, before somebody tries to say that one, like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but even still, it's like you named a bunch of slam bands earlier, and none of those bands sound the same yeah, to me. For, and I'm, you know, like I said, I'm not a slam connoisseur, but the bands, there are when differences. When you start getting really into it, a lot of them sound the same, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's not production, dude. It's not muddied production. You can't hear what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, this kidding. isn't abominable putridity? All right. <laughs> it's got to be muddy in the right way. Yeah, totally. But yeah, I think that that is like... People sometimes get caught up in like being a copy or doing the same thing as another person, but really like thinking outside of the box. That's what makes different bands so cool and so beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. It's the type of stuff that I like to listen to. I would say it really, I don't know. It's like we're, we're putting all this into words, but really just do your thing that you want. Yeah, that's really it. I'm not like when you're writing, you're not thinking like about all this shit. Of course not. You're just like, I'm playing guitar and I'm going to write something like whatever. Yeah. I think I, I, I had to I had to learn how to do that before I felt like I feel like I can formulate what I'm actually you know, I couldn't I had to start just doing me before I feel like I could write something something fresh within without, another within yeah. another uh, genre kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, w- yeah. without yeah. just straight ripping things, you know? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, just do, fucking be yourself, man. I agree. All right. I think we're going to kick it to the post show and have Sanjay show us some slam songs. Uh, Before we go, though, follow you. Follow all of your bands. Name them all again. Uh, Wormhole, Inferi, Grey Lotus, Equipoise. Uh, Let's just leave it at that. Dude's putting out. You're putting out. You're putting out good (laughs) stuff. You don't have a bad one in there. Fuck yeah. yeah. Well, good time. Thanks for hanging, Sanjay. Thanks so much for hanging, Sanjay. You're the best, man. Fun as hell. All right. We will see you guys in the post show. And if you're not on Twitch, we will not see you on the post show. And have a good week. Peace out. Love y'all. Peace. Peace. Much love. Let's roll up another. Yeah.